Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cabin scene inside of Cycles Render on Blender 2.79. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so I'm in a brand new Blender file and I'm going to start right away by just uh, changing the render setting from Blender Render up here at the top. And I'm going to click on that and change it to Cycles Render. Cycles Render is basically just the newer version that's more widely accepted and it should look a little bit better for the type of scene we're trying to make here. So, now that I got that down, I'm just going to set up my workspace to be a little bit easier to use for the type of scene I'm making. So I'm going to press T to get rid of the toolbar on my left, since I don't need it right now. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of our 3D viewport, where there's this white triangle, and I'm going to left click on that. And I'm going to drag it down over our timeline to get rid of that, and so the 3D animator will take over that out of the screen, so we have more room to work on our scene. So... Now that I've gotten rid of that, I'm simply going to right click on my cube, press X, and delete the cube. So, now the cube is gone, I'm going to start off by adding a plane to our scene. This is going to be the ground for the scene. So I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to go to Mesh, Plane. And it's a little small right now, so I'm going to zoom out, and I'm just going to scale it and make it nice and big. And since I'm here, I'm going to move my camera back to be adjusted for this new plane. So now I've kind of got it like over here right above the corner. If I press 0, I can see the camera's view. It's a little too low. So I'm going to press N. And I'm going to go up to the very top. Rotation. And I'm just going to drag that up a little bit to a nicer number. That'll look a bit better in our scene. Alright. So I'm just going to be doing that as we go, kind of adjusting the camera to make it work better so that I don't have to do too much of that at the very end. Alright, so now we have this plane in here for our ground, and I'm going to right click that and press tab to go into edit mode because I'm going to subdivide this a couple of times. So I'm going to subdivide this probably about four or five times. There we go, I've subdivided that four times. and. I am now going to um, sculpt some terrain out of this. So I subdivided it because you need to have at least a couple of um, faces before you can sculpt. Because if there's just one, Blender can't do anything with that. So by subdividing it, I can create a lot of faces here that I'll be able to sculpt on. So I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says edit mode. I'm going to click and I'm going to select sculpt mode. So now I have sculpt mode on. I'm going to press N actually and get rid of that. Press T to open my toolbar. And so I want to make sure my brush is selected on Sculpt Draw. And 35 pixels should be just about right. But before I do anything more, Blender by default will have this set to be uh, symmetrical when I make that. So down here it says Symmetry slash Lock. I'm going to click that. And it says Mirror X. That's turned on by default. I don't want that. So I'm just going to click on that. Get rid of that press T and start sculpting this. So I'm trying to make a sort of like some hills with a, a house inside. So I'm probably going to want kind of like a V shape right here. So I'm just going to start kind of etching that. And if you don't like it, you can just press Control Z and it'll go back and you can try it again and try and make something that you do like. And I'm just going to start basically by making like a vague outline of it. So it's not going to be too big. I'm just going to make a little outline like that and figure out if I like that, and then I'll start adding to that, and make it bigger, kind of start trying to make it look nicer, you know? So, you can do whatever you want with this, you know, you can make some little hills, some big mountains, anything you really want to do. I'm just kind of going to be making some, like, some sort of hills here. I'm going to turn up my pixel count to about 70, I think, so that should be a little bit easier to work with now that I have the shape of what I'm trying to do, kind of. I'm going to make a little mountain right there. Alright, just going to add a little more height. Alright, so that looks good to me. And if you want to see how it's going to look when you render your thing, you can go to your camera view and press Shift Z, and that'll take it to basically what it's going to look like when it's rendered. So right now, obviously, it doesn't look like much because there's no color in this scene and we haven't done the lighting, but I can kind of get an idea of what that's going to start looking like. So I'm going to switch back into object mode, and now that I have this ready, I am going to start working on making a house for this scene. So I'm going to left click where I want my house to be in this scene, 
I'm gonna put it probably like right about there. That looks pretty good to me. Because wherever you uh, have that 3D cursor right there, which is what you move when you press left click, that's where an object is going to be put when you add it. So when I press Shift A and add a new object, it'll add right to where that 3D cursor is. So I'm gonna press Shift A, go to Mesh, and I'm gonna add a cube in. So now that I have that cube, I'm just gonna press 3 and 5, switch to orthographic view. And I'm gonna drag that up a bit so that it's at a better spot. And I'll drag this up just a little bit closer. Actually what I'll do is I'll put that close and I'll switch right here to face in the snap mode and I'll press that, turn it on. And now when I drag it down, it'll just snap onto that face right there. So I won't say I went into edit mode there, but in object mode, I can now see that this is starting to look, you know, I've got that shape there, but it's just a bit too big for the scene. It looks like bigger than the mountains, you know, a little bit ridiculous. So I'm just going to scale it down to a size that I like a bit more. I don't want it to be too small because then you won't really be able to easily see it in the scene. So even though that might be a bit unreasonable of a size still, I'm going to take that because I want it to be noticeable inside the scene. So I'm going to press shift tab and that's the short key. Oops. You have to make sure you press them at the same time, otherwise it goes into edit mode. Shift tab, because that's the short key for uh, that snap mode, and it'll be set. It's set on edge right now. Let me fix that and set that to face. And then just drag this down, and there you go. It'll snap right on. So I can start start seeing that. I'm going to press T and get rid of my toolbar here. So now that I've got this sort of part of the building, I'm going to need a roof on it. So how I'm going to do that? So I'm basically going to press 7, and that's my on top view. I'm going to make sure my 3D cursor is lined up on top of this. So if you use that and line it up and click right there, your 3D cursor will go right on top of the center of your cube, which is pretty nice. It won't be perfectly lined up, but it should be, you know, a lot better than if you just randomly add it somewhere. So I'm going to add a cone, and it doesn't really look like it fits the scene right now as a roof. That doesn't look very reasonable, but if I press T, as long as I haven't clicked on anything. So there's this menu here when you press T for after you add a new object. If you click anything after adding a new object, it'll go away. So right here it says all this stuff. If I am to click on, say, this, or click on something else, it's gonna it's gonna just go away. I'm not gonna be able to mess with that. You know? Er. Alright. Actually, never mind. So it's only gonna go away if you uh, if you mess with it. So if you if you touch something else, that's fine. But if you move the cube, then the whole options are gone, and you don't really want that because you know then you're kind of you can't mess with it, and it's gonna look like that, and that's not a good roof. So I'm gonna go to mesh. I'm gonna go to cone, and before I move this, I'm gonna set the vertices to four, and so that'll make this into a triangle. So I don't need to do anything else with this, so I'm going to press T and get rid of that. Now I have this, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it off, uh, snap, shift, tab, turn that off. I'm going to drag this up, and I'm going to scale it to look a bit more like a roof. So I'm going to press S to scale, and Z to lock it on the Z axis. And I'm just going to scale that down until it looks a little more like a roof. That looks like a roof. Obviously, it's at uh, the wrong rotation right now, so I'm going to press shift tab, snap it onto there, and then I'm going to press N, and I'm just going to rotate it on Z until it looks about right, and that'll probably give me an idea of what I need to rotate it specifically to. So that looks probably fine, so maybe 45 would be the right number. Yeah, 45 seems like that'll be great. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I can see that it doesn't quite fit on there, which is not what I want. I actually want it to be a bit bigger than the cube. You know how roofs have that little overhang kind of? I'm looking to do that. So I don't want to scale it up. I just want to scale it across and make it wider. So I'm going to press S. Oh, right click and cancel that. And I'm going to press actually shift tab before I do any of that to make sure I have snap turned off. And I'm just going to press S, shift. Z, and that'll make it go on every axis except for the Z axis, so I can scale it on those axes. So I'm just going to drag it out a little bit until it 
looks good to me. You know, that looks about right. If I go shift clean, check it out in rendered mode, I'm liking that, you know. That looks nice. I think I'm actually going to select both the roof and the cube. And I'm going to scale them down just a little bit. And I'm going to press shift tab. And I'm going to drag them down and snap them to the floor. So that looks a bit better to me. I just don't want to make them too big, you know? Because then they'll look a little out of place in the scene. So I'm going to deselect those. And the next thing I'm going to work on is making a tree. So basically, I'm going to make one tree, and then I'm just going to duplicate it and kind of change each tree a little bit to make them not all look the same. But I'm going to start by just making one tree. So I'm going to start working on that right now. I'm going to press Shift A, add a new object, Mesh, Cylinder. And I'm going to press T before I move the object like we did last time. And I'm going to go to Vertices, and I'm going to change this to 6. I think that looks nice for a tree, you know? For this low poly style I'm trying to get here. So I'm going to press T because I don't need that anymore. And I'll uh, turn shift tab, turn snap off, and I'll just scale this down until it looks a little bit better for me. Then I'm going to go 7 like I did last time and just so it looks like it's on top right now but it's actually in the center of it which is not what I want. So I'm going to click it and then it'll be about on top. I'm going to go shift A, mesh, I'm going to add a cone, just like last time, and I'm going to press toolbar, and I'm going to change the vertices up a little bit, because 4 looks a little odd for a tree. So I'm going to go to 5, 6, that looks about right to me. Alright, so 6 vertices, and then I'm going to press scale Z, to scale it on the Z axis, like last time, and I'm going to scale it until it looks a little more like a tree. Alright, and then I'm going to scale scale shift z scale everything except z just to make it a little bit bigger do i like it that looks good in fact i might no that looks that looks just right to me all right so i'm gonna go seven click on top of that again like i did last time actually i don't need to do any of that never mind what i'm gonna do is just duplicate this i'm not gonna add a new cone i'm gonna press shift d while i have this one selected click and then it will be right on top of it, and I'm just going to drag it up on the z-axis. And then I'm going to scale it in just a little bit. And I'm going to drag it down till I like it. And I'm going to do the same thing, shift D, drag it up a little. And just kind of scale it in on top of the other one. Drag it down a little more, probably. I think I'll do one more here. Drag it up a little, scale it in, drag it down a little. There we go, that looks pretty nice to me. That's looking good. And I'm probably going to take all of this. Well, before I do anything, I'm going to select all, all of these pieces that make up the tree. And I'm going to press Control J and make them one object so that I won't have to deal with duplicating like five objects at a time when I move S. So I just knocked into my mic there. So I've got those all joined with Control J. I'm gonna press zero. Look at that. And okay, it looks it looks all right. It looks about right as far as the scale goes. So I'm okay with this. And I'll press Shift Tab, turn on lock, and I'll drag it into the ground. Turn it off. All right, guys. So uh, while I was recording that, Rumbler actually crashed on me. Not something it usually does. But um, it crashed on me and I lost uh, that save, so I've tried to recreate it the best I can, but if you notice that everything looks a tad bit different, that would be why. So anyways, now that I'm back, I'm going to start coloring the tree using materials. So I've got the tree joined as one object, and I'm gonna press N, give myself a little more space here. Um, I've got the tree joined as one object, so now I'm going to use materials to color it in. So I'm going to go over to the materials tab in properties, I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to name this one Weaves. So I've got that new material, and I'm trying to change it to a nice dark green sort of color. If you go Shift Z, you can start seeing it. It looks a bit too dark for me, so I'm going to change the brightness up just a tad bit until it looks something more like I want, something like that. That looks good to me. But you'll notice down here, the trunk of the tree is green, and obviously that's wrong. 
So I'm gonna press shift V go out of rendered mode. I'm gonna add a new tab right there. I'm gonna add a new material and I'm gonna name this one tree trunk. Alright, now I'm gonna select the color and just change it to like a nice nice brown color. So somewhere around there and then just darken it, make it nice and dark, like a tree trunk. And I'm gonna press tab and go into edit mode. And I'm gonna go to face select, because I need to select the faces that I want to add the tree trunk color to since this is all one object. So I'm going to select the faces on our, whoa, got caught up in the mountain there. going to select the faces on this tree trunk here that I want to color, and I'm going to click tree trunk, and I'm going to press assign. So now the tree trunk color is assigned to that, and you can see that it has a nice brown color, and the leaves have a nice green color, so it looks like a tree. So, now I'm going to go to object mode, and basically, I'm just going to press shift D, and I'm going to duplicate this tree and put it all around here but I want to make sure when doing this that I leave a nice trail going out from away from the cabin because I'm going to be making a trail out of there so basically what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start making that trail of the trees and that will fill in everywhere else so I'm going to drag this tree over here I'm going to press shift D click and I'm just going to drag it over here and I'm going to make this winding trail of trees, leaving a big open area in between them. That's because, obviously, the trail isn't going to be that big. It's just going to be those little stepping stones. But I want to leave a lot of room, because if the trees all overlap there, you won't be able to actually see it. So something about like this should be good. And just keep doing this and make this little, little trail. Alright, and make sure none of the trees overlap with each other or overlap with the cabin. So you want to do this inside of the uh, camera perspective by pressing zero, like I did, because you want to make sure none of the trees overlap anything important in your scene. Because if you have a tree like this one, say, and you put it in front of the cabin, I press shift Z and look at the render, it kind of blocks the cabin and I don't want that, that looks weird. If we go over here and you take this tree and you put it like right, oh, you put it. Sometimes it'll grab it by the center. You want to make sure you use the little, little tools right here, the um, things to move it, because otherwise it'll kind of go all over the place. And you, I don't really want that. But anyways, I'm gonna move it right in front of this tree. And if I press Shift Z and look at it, it just kind of looks bad. You know, they overlap in a weird way, and it's it doesn't look very good in the render. So instead. I want to kind of keep them like this and make sure none of them overlap with each other. So now that I have them like that, I'm just going to fill in everything outside of this trail. And again, I'm going to make sure none of the trees overlap each other. So just press Shift D, click, and then kind of drag them out, find a nice spot right here. In this tree, nothing overlaps it, you know, just adds to the scene, makes it look more like a forest. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And you just fill out this whole spot by doing that. Alright, so this is a part of the video, you can just pause, or I mean, yeah, you would just want to pause here, and finish fleshing out your scene like this, and play the video again when you're done, and I'll cut to when I'm done, and I'll see you then. Alright, so I'm back, and I finished fleshing out the uh, forest for this scene, and you can see I now have trees all over the place, but none of them overlap too much with any of the other ones, so when you look at it, it looks nice and good inside the render. So now that I've got that done, what I'm going to be doing is just coloring the ground in. So I'm going to go to object mode, right click on the uh, plane we're using for our ground, press new material, and I'm going to name this one grass, and this is going to be uh, a lighter green. So not as dark as the trees, but just a nice green color. I'll switch to shift Z so I can kind of see it, and I'll change the color down a little to something I like. That looks good. Alright, now I have it on that. So I'm good with this grass color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the house. So the house is the most complex thing I'll be doing for uh, coloring it in with these materials. I'm going to basically be using loop cuts to make windows and a door for this house. So I'm going to go to edit mode. And you can see the house right here. I'm going to just press A, deselect it. And this is the front thing. This is where the door would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control r and I'm going to move my mouse down to right here, and that will activate this loop cut, this big purple line. I'm going to left click, and I can move it to wherever I want. So I'm going to move it 
somewhere over here probably and I'll do another loop cut and I'll move this one probably about here looks pretty good to me and I'll place one more loop cut this one going across the top I click right here and add it like right about there so now I have this face right here that looks great for a door so now I'm gonna head over here and there's already a loop right there that I can use but I'm gonna make a couple more for my windows so I'm gonna press control R actually first I'm gonna deselect that door but I'm gonna press control R and I'm gonna navigate right over kind of the edge right there select it and then I'm gonna drag it down to about right there that looks good and before I do anything else you can see this tree kind of getting in the way so I'm gonna take this tree actually you know what I'm gonna do instead I'm gonna take this cube and I'm gonna press shift H and that's gonna hide everything besides this cube and when I'm done I can press another key to get it all back of course so now we've got this I go to edit mode and I'm gonna look at this I'm gonna press Control R put in another loop cut up top and I'm gonna slide it over actually I'll put this one at the edge like right here and then put another loop cut right about here and I'm gonna slide another loop cut to this one's edge I'll put another loop cut right there so now we have those two faces for our windows and if that doesn't look quite right right here I don't like this line where it is I can press G and then G again double tap G and just slide it a little over and there you go that looks a bit better so now I have all these faces here and I'm gonna add some new materials I'm gonna add a new one and I'm just gonna name this one building this is gonna be the one that goes everywhere on this cube so I'll select a kind of like a woodish color like for a tree trunk maybe not quite as dark something like this a select everything sign and that doesn't look too bad so now I'm gonna add a new one new material name this material before and I'm gonna make this a kind of bright sort of reddish wood kind of looking thing and you can obviously use like any color you want this is just the colors I'm using feel free to just kind of experiment here and do whatever you want with these and try and make it look interesting make it your own you know so actually i need to remember just like the door one then press the sign and now you can see i've got that door to shape right there then i'm going to select these two faces i'm going to add a new material new i'm going to name this one window and i'm going to make these kind of like a blue you know so i'm going to go in here select this to like a light blue a sign shift to z looks good to me so now i'm going to go to shift z view I'm going to deselect everything, I'm going to press Alt H, Control H, whoa, actually, one thing I forgot, you have to be in object mode, so I'm going to press tab, go to object mode, Alt H, everything comes back into the scene. So now, if you press Shift C, you can see that on our cube, we do have one thing that looks a bit odd, there's no coloring on our roof, so I'm going to press uh, on the roof, and I'm going to press new, add a new one, I'm going to name this one roof, and I'm going to make it like a dark red brown type of color sort of like our other door but a little darker that looks good to me if I go to camera view looks good I like that so I'm gonna press shift C and now I'm all good with all of these colorings but the scene kind of looks odd because the only light is like right in the middle of the trail and that it's not a very strong light it doesn't look good so I'm gonna click on that light in object mode and I'm gonna change it where it says lamp. I'm gonna change it, right now it's on point. I'm gonna change it to sun. And if you shift Z, you can see it's way brighter. So I'm gonna drag it up a little. And I'm gonna kind of focus the sun probably, where that line is, around on that cabin. And I'm gonna drag it up, because it's real bright. And it can be a lot higher. So I'll drag it up like that. All right, so that looks good. To me, it looks a little too bright, so I'm going to go use nodes strength, and I'm going to turn the strength down to about 0.8. To me, that looks that looks good, and you can just kind of mess with that as you as you want to, and set that to your own own settings. So now that I've got that, it all starting to come together, but the sky is still this gray nothing, and that doesn't look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to world, and I'm going to go use nodes when it says surface. So over by color, there's this little dot, and I'm going to left click on that. Oops, I'm going to left click, and I'm going to go to sky texture underneath textures, 
I'm gonna click on that. So now there's a lot of options here. And basically you have the choice between host like slash willy or wilky or something like that and presamp. Presamp kind of looks like a sunset if you want something like that. I'm going to use this one. It looks more like a daytime, you know, kind of a bluish color. And then there's some options underneath here. You've got turbidity, which kind of makes it like a browner color if you go towards that. You can kind of just play with that. And then you've got ground albedo. I, I have no idea how you say that, to be honest. Um, and this is sort of like the color of your scene reflected in the sky. So if you turn that up, it's a bit more of the kind of green color I have. I think that looks great. So I'm going to keep that all the way up. And I'll mess with turbidity. And I'll just kind of turn that up a little. And now I've got it like this. It's all looking good. But I'm going to turn the strength up a little down here. And that'll kind of make it brighter. So if I turn the strength up to like 1.5, you can kind of see it makes it look a little brighter. It makes more of that uh, background and sky kind of reflect on the scene. So I'm liking that. I think that looks good. So I'm going to press Shift Z and go out of here, you know. All looks good. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to start working on that trail. This is the last thing I have to do for this scene. I'm going to press Shift A and mesh. I'm going to add a cube. Now this does not look like the side of a trail, but it will get better. So I'm just going to scale this down a lot, to about right here, and I'm going to go scale, I'm going to scale it down on the z-axis too. And now I'm going to go to this little wrench over here in the properties panel and add a modifier. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And if you put that just at 1, make sure the render is set at 1 too, and I'll apply that right now. Then you'll see this cube is kind of looking like that end, like they sort of smushed it together. And if you press Shift Z or S Z, apologies, and scale that down a little, you can see it looks kind of like a stepping stone now. I go to Shift Z; it's already got the gray material, so it's looking good there. And you just want to drag that into the ground, basically. Now you have it like this until it's sort of underneath, like just like that. So now I'm just going to drag that kind of in front of the door. I'm going to go to Camera View. And I can see how they look, you know. I like it. So I'm just gonna, oops, I accidentally entered wireframe. I'm just gonna start dragging those out. Just shift D, just like I did for the trees. And then just drag it out, shift D, left click, drag it out. And I'm gonna make this kind of like, you know, slithering pattern sort of. Sort of like a snake going across to try and add some life to it. If it's just a straight line, you know, it doesn't look very interesting. You don't want that. So. You know, try and add some variety to it as you go here. And make sure none of the trees block it. You don't want the trees to block the stones. So if you do have not enough room for the stone, like the trees are blocking it, I'd recommend you just kind of change uh, the position of the trees a little bit. Mess with that so that nothing's uh, getting blocked in your render. So now that I have that, it's all looking good to go. I'm going to add a material to the stones just to... Uh, make it look a bit better. New material. I'm going to name this stone. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on material and in the little darkness slider I'm just going to drag it down. And if I go shift Z you can see that stone is darker than the other ones. That's the one that this material is applied to. So I'm just going to use that one and I'm going to drag it up a little bit on the brightness. Alright that looks good to me. So I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go select stone and just go through all of these doing that. Just click on it and drag to stone right there. Alright, so I'm just going to go through those. A couple left, and I'm going to make everything stone. And then that's basically everything we have in our render. We are going to want to mess with the camera maybe a little bit, you know, if you want to. You can kind of set that to whatever you'd like. I think my camera already here looks good. If it doesn't, you're going to want to go into object mode and just right click on your camera and just kind of mess with it. If you press N, you get some options for rotation. So you can rotate like how high or up it looks kind of, and that's nice. That's always a good one. And that's important to adjust, you know, get that to the right setting. I like to show a decent bit of sky, but I don't want to show any of the plane behind the mountains. So if it does still show part of the plane behind your mountains, just go into sculpt mode and just make the mountains a little bit higher. That's what I would recommend. All right, so I'm done with my scene now. I think everything looks good here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, shift to get out of that. I'm going to go to the camera little tab in my properties and I'm going to click render. 
and this is going to take a minute, it's just going to render my scene. It'll be different depending on the speed of your computer, but it's just going to kind of make this scene a clear, good 2D image. So once it's done and you have this image, it's going to be all high res and nice and clean. It's all the effects added. And you can, uh, you can use that image to save it as like a PNG and just use that as a normal image. So then you can do whatever you want with it. You can post it on Facebook or Reddit or whatever. You can use it as a wallpaper or anything you'd like to do. So it's got a minute left here, just a second to render. And it should be looking good once it all renders. As soon as it renders, I'll show you how to save it. I'm going to go basically to the image tab, just save it. It's almost done here. So there's no point in cutting the video. I'll just wait for one second. If your render takes a really long time, you could just cancel it, and you can look for some basically some, there's some stuff you can do to shorten your render time, depending on whether you have a stronger CPU or GPU or that type of thing. So my render's all done now, and I'm going to go to image, click here, save as image, and I'm going to go to wherever I want to save it. I'll save it, uh, save it to my desktop, and I'm going to name this uh, Forest Cabin, actually, that's what I'm naming it, Forest Cabin. Well, I already have an image named Forest Cabin because I've been practicing. So I'll go Forest Cabin 2. There you go. Save as image. So I now have this saved as an image to my desktop. So if I close out of Blender and close out of this file, I can go to Forest Cabin 2, click that, and hey, there it is. There's my scene. Incidentally, so scroll to something else there. Here's my scene right here, and you can see that it's just saved as a normal JPEG image. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, make sure to subscribe and uh, give me a like. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'll be hanging with the trees. You'll be outside of my leaves. We can talk again in winter. Whistle Dixie for the crows. Feel the ground and decompose. Grab my limb and get a splinter. Lost your watch, but found your way. Woke